Okay, so today's gonna be exciting. If you wanna interact with me, make sure that you go over to facebook.com slash massive action movement. I'm not gonna really be able to see the comments on Instagram. I might look back here every once in a while to see who's on there. But if you wanna interact with me, go to facebook.com slash massive action movement. You'll be able to answer, I answer questions, everything on there. But today, we're talking about how to build a compelling brand story. Basically, how to build a world-class brand. I'm really excited to talk about this one because this is one that a lot of people ask me about. Like, you ever want to build that brand with raving fans? This is what it is right here. Let me make sure this is off right here. But uh, basically, go over there. Facebook.com slash Mass Action Movement is the best place to watch it. I I'll probably do a replay of it. I've got a recording right now, so I might do a replay of it. But definitely don't want to miss this one because we're going to go in depth. We're going to go pretty deep today on how you can build a brand. And I'm not going to talk about just the simple shit that everybody talks about, what most people talk about, basically. You know, you just got to make sure the colors are nice and have your Instagram page. I'm gonna talk about what I call the dark secrets of branding, the stuff that you have to get really high in branding or you've had to work with a lot of top level companies to learn about. So if you're interested in that, only if, only if you're interested in that, check out today's because um, we're gonna be going over all that. All right, and as usual, we'll also be pulling stuff from right here how to Start a Business in 30 Days. It's an amazing booklet, so we're gonna be showing stuff out of here. I'll put it in the camera and stuff like that. Let me turn to this page right here. One of the things we're gonna be referencing today is this specific page right here in the booklet, which is talking about telling a compelling brand story. Let me show that to Instagram too. We're gonna to talk about telling a compelling brand story. Now, what's great about this is that basically anybody can do this. If you feel like you're not a great storyteller, it does not matter. Anybody can do what I'm about to show you. So let me write this down. How to tell a brand story. Now, just to give you a little bit of insight about how I discovered this. Now, if you don't know about me, my first passion when I started business was filmmaking. I, my first company was a filmmaking company called Conscious Media, and we made all kinds of productions. If you ever seen on my story in my house, there's a poster right here that I can't show you um, because I can't flip the camera around. This setup is crazy. But that was the first movie I ever made. And one of the things I delved, delved deep into was the art of storytelling. So I've read all kinds of books about storytelling. Um, I don't know if you're a story person, but if you've ever read The Hero of a Thousand Faces, a lot of the greatest stories that have ever been written throughout history follow this structure. And we're going to talk about how we can use that and leverage stuff like that in our stories. Another great book is The Anatomy of Story. It's by John Truby. And this is teaching you basically how to write scripts. If you've ever seen some of our work that we've done, um, you can check out Who is Country Cowboy on YouTube right now. It's an amazing documentary about my business partner and good friend, Country Cowboy. Another one you can check out is Confessions of a Nightlife Architect, which is about another one of my good friends, world's most hated promoter, William Harwell. You can check out either one of these, but... You can see the film aspect playing into those. Now, you may look at those things and say, oh man, this is crazy, this is over the top, but there's a very specific structure I use to tell stories. Now, I built a business from sleeping in the back room of my mother's house by using a very simple process, a very simple storytelling process, and I'm gonna teach you that storytelling process today. Also, in this live stream today, I'm going to show you how to become a better storyteller. So when you tell your stories, you have people engaged and people want to listen. So if you've ever been interested in any of those things, make sure you're checking out this today because we're going to go through all of them. All right. So let's talk about the origin of storytelling. Now, as we all know, storytelling has been around since the beginning of time. Back, back to the days when we were in tribes and we used to sit around the campfire and we used to tell each other stories. But one of the significances of stories, or one, the big significance of a story, rather, was the fact that the story was the best way to convey information. So if you were going to tell somebody about something that was going on, or you were trying to teach a lesson, you would tell them a story. And as human beings, we are hardwired to listen to stories. I want you to keep that in mind. Storytelling is the most effective way because those who tell stories well win the game. My good friend Country Cowboy always says this. He says, he who tells the best story wins. So you've been put on this earth, and your job is to tell the story. Now, you may think that your story is not exciting. You may think your story is not compelling. You may think you don't have enough drama in the story, but I can guarantee 
out of all the people I've worked with at this point, and I've worked with so many people, hundreds of people, to help them build their brand story, I can tell you, there's not one person, not one single person that I have met that does not have a compelling brand story. So if you live life, you have a compelling brand story. It's just about using that and leveraging it to make you unique. And that's another great benefit of telling a brand story is that nobody can steal your brand story. You're the only person with your story. And this is what makes your marketing unique. It makes your marketing compelling because now you may sell a certain type of shoe. Uh, last week when we did our live stream, we talked about a juice bar. You may have a juice bar, but the thing that's going to be different this time is that it's going to be a lot more compelling because you're telling a unique story. So like I said, if you're on Instagram right now, I can't see the feed. So go to facebook.com slash massive action movement to interact because we're going to go in just short. Let me just grab this water real quick. Y'all, y'all should still be able to hear me, but let me just grab a little water real quick because y'all know I like to talk. So, all right. Okay. Ooh, did I move that? Hopefully not. Okay. All right. Okay. Here we go. And if you are watching on Instagram Live, I'm going to get somebody to probably help me with that next time so I can actually see the people interacting on Instagram Live. But if you are, go to Facebook.com slash Massive Action Movement because we're going to get right into this. So we talked about the origin of storytelling. And I want to talk about two concepts. So I'm going to say this is the big picture. So in order to be effective storytellers, we have to master two types of storytelling. So one type of storytelling is what we call micro storytelling. Macro storytelling. Now, if you ever watched a content creator that you like, you'll probably notice that they're very good at telling stories. Now, the reason I call this the big picture is because there's two aspects to this. Now, the first aspect is the micro storytelling. So what is this? This is basically when you tell a story. Let's say you do a video like this and you tell a story and you take them back into the past, you have a good process of telling that story so that it's compelling. And most people don't understand that the storytelling is a simple structure that you use. Have you ever heard somebody tell a story, maybe you're at a party or something, and it just fizzles out? Well, really, that's because the structure wasn't good. You can make the most boring shit ever sound interesting if you understand the structure of storytelling. Does that make sense? So, the micro storytelling aspect is one thing that has to be mastered, and we're going to give you some good frameworks in this today. In this very live stream today, they're going to help you become better micro storytellers. Now, on the big picture, your brand in general has to tell a macro story. And I came up with this term a long time ago, and I called it narrative marketing. So narrative marketing is basically a term that I came up with that talks about how your entire marketing has to have an underlying narrative that people can follow. And that's what makes it compelling. If we look at the best people online, and we look at the best people who've ever done this, they have a compelling story that they tell. Now, if we're looking at to build a powerful brand, we need to tell a compelling story. So, so far as this makes sense, that we've got a big picture, we have to understand micro storytelling and macro storytelling, and this is what generates what we call narrative marketing, where we're using stories to tell, well, to make our brand stand out and be separate from the, from the, from the bunch, I guess you could say, right? Drop a Y. If you're on Instagram, you're watching, drop a Y if that makes sense. If that makes sense. If you're on Facebook over here, drop a Y if that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Let me, let me just check this real quick. Okay. So yeah, drop a Y if it makes sense. And we're going to continue on. All right. So let's just talk about the different aspects of this now. So what is narrative marketing, right? Well, 
One of the greatest marketers of all time, his name is Seth Godin, he wrote an amazing book. And it was called All Marketers Tell Stories. So if you look up this book, you'll see that there's a thing that says all marketers tell lies and they cross it out and tell stories. And the thing people don't understand is that a lot of times when you're looking at somebody's story, people take dramatic license. I learned this when I was watching films. So a great story that I used to love or a great series I used to love was Boardwalk Empire on HBO. If you've ever watched that, I thought it was an amazing series. But when I was watching the recaps, what I found out was that a lot of the characters weren't exactly like they were presented in history. And in fact, the main character did not even exist in history. He said, that's where we took dramatic license. And this idea of dramatic license is taking events from your life and presenting them in a way that's more dramatic. Anytime you watch a movie, you've seen this done. The stories are not exactly like that. But the whole thing is we make them more compelling. So when we create a narrative, we're taking our lives we're adding the elements that are most exciting to our viewer to tell a narrative. But the narrative, if you watched us last week, has to be tied to your overall vision. Now, I don't have time to go back through this. We went through this last week about how to create a vision, but it needs to be tied to your overall vision and it needs to tell an overall story. Now, we're just gonna use the Cineverse, for example, simply because it's already good to go. Create a future. you control. The whole thing is, I'm just shorthanding it here, but it's basically create a future where you are in control. Does that make sense? We're basically going to tell a story, an overall story. This is narrative. We're going to tell a narrative that the people who come into our company, they're creating a future where they're, where they're in control. Do you follow me so far? Drop a Y if you follow me. You follow me so far? Does this make sense? Okay. So how do we do this? So what are some things that are tied to this? And this is important. This is like mind mapping. If you've ever heard of mind mapping, you need to understand this. We started with the vision, which we talked about last week, if you don't know where to go find that. And then from there, we had this vision that we created. So our job is to help people create a future where in control. So what are some of the things that might stop somebody from doing this that's going to be part of our narrative? Maybe traditional education. Or more importantly, Fuck traditional education, right? This may be a part of our story. Another thing is MBAs. Another thing may be um, regular job. So these are things that we want to embed into our story, ideas that we want to talk about, concepts we want to talk about, things we want to highlight from our story in order to make it compelling. Now, I could do this all day. I could go through a bunch of different things that help you create a future where you're in control. But how does this manifest when it comes to how we create our story? Now, one thing I emphasize a lot is that you have to break out of traditional education. Does this make sense? So a lot of stuff I'm going to talk about is how I left traditional education. If you watch my story, if you watch me for a while, you know that I dropped out of college and I was sleeping on the floor at the back of my mother's house. But I emphasize this particular part of my story because it goes into the narrative of breaking out of traditional education. Are you following me so far? Are you seeing this? Are you seeing what I'm doing? Because I was breaking out of traditional education, I emphasize that part of my story. And this is where I'm talking about dramatic license. Now, let's say I was just doing a coffee shop or something like that, and that wasn't really that important. I would highlight another part of my story. Maybe I grew up smelling coffee when my grandmother used to cook coffee all the time, or maybe I grew up in a place where coffee was all around, and now, I'm bringing that to the world because I feel like they need to have high quality ingredients or they need to have coffee that is not fake or overproduced. I would highlight a different part of my narrative, a different part of my story, because that's what is going to create this overall narrative, this overall macro story. And all macro means is like big picture. Now, with that being said, if you're creating your story right now, if you're trying to create a story right now, what you have to emphasize are the areas of your life that go inside your vision, which go inside your story. And we're going to call this a story statement. And the story statement is just something that you're trying to achieve for your audience that they can follow along. So this should be tied into you, which is your story, which is me. I already told you I'm here to help people create a future where they're in control. But for me, it was important to challenge traditional thinking. So one thing I always do is I'll have people around me that are not traditionally what you would believe are or who should be successful. I might dress away sometimes that you don't traditionally perceive as somebody who would be successful. 
Now, that doesn't mean I won't wear a suit because I love suits too. I, I'm not one of these people who's like, fuck suits. But what I am saying is that's part of my narrative. So all this stuff ties in. From your branding and all this type of stuff, you're telling a story. Because I want you to think about it like this. Okay, just think about it like this. You're telling a story, right? You're telling a story, and or you see somebody and they're wearing a certain type of clothing, right? You're automatically going to start building a story in your mind. What type of person this is, what type of money they make, what type of job they might have. You always build these stories in your mind. Well, what we want to start doing with our brand is putting certain images around certain ideas, whereas when people think about our brand, they start associating a certain story to it. And this is what I feel like most people fail when they talk about telling a brand story. Yes, you can get on your story, and we're going to talk about some strategies to tell micro stories in a second. And then we're even going to go through this. I'm going to take you through this if you haven't seen it. I'm going to take you through this. We're going to talk about how to tell a brand story. But what's important for you to remember is that these elements are layered in through everything they do. So I might repost something about somebody saying fuck college or something like that or why the education system is failing right now. Because these things tie into my story. One of the things that spawned from my narrative marketing. Does this make sense? Instagram, does this make sense? See, I'm on Facebook too. So if y'all want the best version of this, Go over to facebook.com slash massive action movement. I pinned it right there. But drop a Y. I can't see y'all from here. I have to go over here to interact with y'all. But basically drop a Y. Drop a Y if that makes sense. If that makes sense, just drop a Y. Okay. So perfect. All right. Okay. So now... Let's get down into the most important part of this. You're going to love this part. I'm just, checking, I'm just checking over here, the feed and stuff like that. Okay. So now that we understand what narrative marketing is, now we understand how we're, trying, we're going to embed this in our brand story, let's talk about on a small level, on the micro level, How to tell a story. And I'm just going to put micro. Okay. So, a story follows a basic structure. And if you've ever watched a movie, this won't be news to you, which is it beginning, just put B for beginning, middle, end, right? So, this is the simple structure of a story, but what we're going to talk about is a way to tell this story, anything that's really compelling, and that's how we do this next structure. So, every story needs a setup. You can think of this as the beginning. An event. And then a payoff. So this is the basic gist of how you tell a story. Now I'm going to talk about something completely nonsensical to illustrate this point, but you'll understand how you can tell better stories when you understand that what you're trying to do is beginning, middle, end. Now there's all these different concepts you can do, like the rule of threes and stuff like that. There's all this stuff that we can go into, but I want to keep it basic for this and just tell you how to tell a basic story, right? So if I was telling a story about when I set up the stuff today, I would say, you know, it's crazy how when you're setting up stuff, things can go wrong. So what I've done basically there is a setup. Now, what have I teased in the beginning of that? It's crazy when you're setting up how things can go wrong. So I've created this basic setup, and a lot of people just miss this. They'll dive right into the story without setting it up, without giving the audience, the reader, something that is going to entice them to go further. Does this make sense? We want to set the story up. Instead of just saying, well, you know, man, when I was setting up today, this happened. It's like, okay, that's not very interesting. But by saying, it's crazy what can happen to you when you actually are setting up equipment for a live stream, everything that can go wrong. So in this, in this instance, what is the audience automatically assuming right now? That something went wrong. What do you think the audience is assuming? Drop what you think the audience is assuming. 
the audience is assuming that something is probably going wrong. So since the audience is assuming that something is probably going wrong, what we're then observing from that standpoint is that you basically set up the premise for the story, right? Now, the middle part is where I would say the most creativity has to come because this is where you can add the flare, the flash, right? So going back to our story, and if I said, you know, it's crazy what can go, up, go on when you're trying to set up for a live stream. So I was setting up for a live stream today, and you'll never guess. One of my friends came over, and he walked in the door, burst through the door. He was like, oh, my God, you'll never guess what happened, right? So I'm sitting there trying to set up all this stuff, and all of a sudden I hear a loud crash. Now, where we at? We're in the middle. We created some anticipation. Now we're sitting there thinking, guy bust in, hear a loud crash, what's the next payoff? Now, what the payoff comes down to is, it is the thing that wraps the entire story up. So now that we've had the crash or whatever, right? I look, that, I look back and I say, all of my equipment had fallen over. My lights were broken, everything was crashed. But at that very moment, he had told me that he had found a way to find equipment for very cheap. Now, that is a crazy story. But at the same time, what that story illustrates is that you had a simple setup, an event, and a payoff. A setup, an event, and a payoff. And you'll find when you do this structure, you can pretty much make anything interesting. For example, I was walking from the store today. And as I'm walking through the store, there was this huge row of black SUVs that rolled up. Now, one guy jumps out and he runs over to me. And he says, hey, you, come here really quickly. Now, I don't have a mask on, I don't have anything on, and I'm thinking to myself, holy shit, I wonder if this is like the COVID busters or something like that. And he looks me dead in my eyes and he says, hey, can you give me directions to the stadium? So I gave him directions and that was it. Now, the setup, the event and the payoff, the payoff may have been something you were like, that wasn't that exciting. But the point of it is, you have a setup, you have an event, you have a payoff. When you're at a story, or if you're at an event and you're telling a story to somebody, just remember this structure. You will be amazed at how much more powerful your stories are when you have some type of setup, event, and a payoff. Setup, something happens, payoff, which is basically beginning, middle, end. Now, we're going to observe a lot more complex structure in just a second. In just a second, we're going to go through a lot more complex structure. So if you're following me so far, drop a Y in the chat. But also, if, if you want to interact with me, go over to facebook.com slash massiveactionmovement. That's where we're live streaming right now. I wanted to get this good, the good visual for you. So last week, we couldn't see the words and stuff like that. But basically, this is where we're at right now. So now we know how to tell a micro story. That's basically simply it. Even when I tell stories, a lot of times to people, and people say, oh, man, you tell a great story, I use a simple structure like this. If I want to elaborate, like each, each part of this, you could extend it out further. We're going to talk about a more complex structure in just a second, but I want you to just have some quick tool you can bust out. So say you get on your Instagram, say you get on your YouTube, say you get on anything, you'll be able to quickly tell your story. And if we go back to this right here, we know that that stories or all the small stories should be tied to the narrative marketing idea that we created earlier. Does this make sense? Drop a Y if this makes sense. I had to go check on that, make sure it was still running. But drop, drop a Y if this makes sense. So if you want to tell this story, it just has to make sense. All right. So now that we've seen what narrative marketing is, we've seen what micro storytelling is, let's talk about how we craft a complete brand story. In the macro. Okay. All right. So, in order to go through this part, I want to introduce you to this of the How to Start a Business in 30 Days workbook. And it's How to Tell a Brand Story. This is a basic structure that has been used by all the greatest storytellers, a lot of the movies that you love and enjoy, in order to effectively tell the story. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through each one. And then we're going to construct a story right here online about whatever, right? 
So the first part is backstory. Now backstory is just setting up your character. Now remember when I told you set up event payoff. You're going to see this is just an extended version of this because every story is basically beginning, middle, end. But a lot of times people don't have that little payoff at the end that kind of wraps the story up into a bow. So basically, backstory. You can think of this as like telling the audience about your character. So if you're talking about yourself, you may talk about maybe you started in corporate America. Maybe you came from sleeping on the floor at your mother's house. This is your backstory. This is basically setting up the idea of why you're about to go into the events that you're going into. Now, one thing about the story, we want to have a general premise about where we're going. Um, for example, this was a premise that I used as far as creating the podcast when we talk about telling the story of Mama's House Penthouse. Oh, what was it? When two entrepreneurs, well, I'm not going to write this all out because it's long, but it's basically you want to have a, a premise. And the premise we had was when two entrepreneurs were fed up with the traditional views of success, they created a podcast to teach people how they can be successful in an untraditional way. That's basically the premise of the podcast. Now, everything we talk about there is around that premise, and it goes back to the story. Now, if you know our backstory, you know where I came from, you know where DJ came from, and it sets up this nice little story with the podcast. The podcast is literally called From Mama's House to Penthouse, which is going into that narrative, right? So that's the backstory. You're setting up your character, no different than a movie. And like I said, take dramatic license. You have to, you have to do your life in a more interesting way. And we're using this structure right here in order to do it. Okay, so next part is desires. Desires. What do you want to accomplish? What did you want to accomplish when you set out on your journey? Business, whatever it is, what did you want to accomplish? Why don't you think about that for a second? Drop some desires in the chat if you want. Some things you want to accomplish when you're on the way to be successful. What are some things that you wanted to happen? What are some ideas that you wanted to see in the world? You want to write them here. Now, this is why this is important. There's two types of desires you need to write here in order to make the story compelling. And you're going to see why this is important once we get to the point of telling the story. You need internal and external. Now, why is this important? Internal desires have to do with, well, let's start with external. External desires have to do with the stuff that we're all familiar with. Materialistic stuff. I wanted a bigger house. I wanted to buy my mom a house. I wanted to buy a car. Um, I never had, I was never able to eat. I wanted to be able to eat. Stuff like that. These are external desires. And you definitely need these because this is the basis of what you're externally trying to strive for in your stories. But we always must have an internal desire. Now, this is so important. Write this down if you have not. Write this down if you're not, Instagram. This is so important. You must, 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 must have an internal desire because this is what allows you to connect with the audience. This is what allows you to connect with the audience. Now, having an internal desire means it's not something as simple as I want material success or anything like that. It's something that may be an internal struggle you were dealing with that you want to overcome. So in my story, I put that, yeah, I wanted to be successful, but I also wanted to feel like I was worthwhile. I was a grown man sleeping on the floor of my mother's house, so I felt worthless to society. So internally, I wanted to feel like a whole human being. I wanted to feel like a grown adult. I wanted to feel like I was somebody worthwhile, like I was worthy of success. So these are internal desires. These, notice these have nothing to do with what I want to achieve. Nice house, nice car. Doesn't matter. We're gonna have you have those external goals. So building a business was my external goal. Building the Cineverse, building the massive action movement, external goal. But internally, I want to feel worthwhile. And if you're watching this right now, I guarantee you have some internal desires. And you may be scared to share those things, but if you want to tell a compelling brand story that's gonna make people rave about you and want to join your cause and call you and say, hey man, I want to work with you, your story really motivated me. You need to have internal desires also, because let me tell you something. When I used to tell people how I didn't feel like I was worthy of success, how I felt like I was worthless, how I felt like even though I was smart, I wasn't accomplishing shit. So many people hit me up and said, bro, I resonated with that. 
When I talk about the self-esteem and confidence issues that I had, when I talk about my ego and the problems letting go of petty bullshit I had, when I talk about my family not believing me in the beginning, all these internal things resonated with people. And this is the hook. You follow me? This is the hook that brings people in. If you follow me, drop a Y. Facebook, drop a Y if you follow me so far. Okay, so we got our backstory and we got our desires. Next, we're gonna talk about what was your opposition? Okay, so now remember when I was talking about the dramatic license? You went out to do this, you went out set out on your journey. What did you face? What opposition did you face? What were the things standing in your way that were stopping you from becoming successful? Really simple. For me, it was very simple. Poverty, lack of knowledge, and support. So in my story, when I talk about what's, what was holding me back from being successful, it was these things. And I'll add one more. Self-esteem. So now let's think of yourself as an adventurer. Let's think of yourself as somebody who's going out on a journey or a quest. What this basically does here is you've got this backstory of who this person is. So if you're taking, if it was me, for example, I would say I was sleeping on the floor of my mother's house. Maybe you say I was coming from corporate America and I just was really getting fed up with everything that was going on in corporate America. I wanted to do something for myself, right? Of course, I wanted to build my own business and have freedom. But deep down inside, I was feeling like that my life was completely unfulfilled. I was working in corporate America, but I felt like I had so much more potential. So I want to feel like I was living up to what I felt was valuable in my life. We've already built a backstory for this person. We've already built some desires internal and external. So basically, when you're telling your story and you're talking to people, this is what they want to know. This is what they connect with. Think about all the great people you know. How much of their story do you know? So remember I talked about this idea on the, on the, on the macro level? Well, in my story, when I start getting down to the opposition, I start talking about school. I start talking about education and stuff like that because I already had built this idea of a story with the narrative marketing. Does this make sense? If you're just joining us, go to facebook.com slash massive action movement to watch the live stream on Facebook. It's a, be it's a better quality over there. I want y'all to check it out. If you don't get a chance to check it out right now, come back and check it out later. I'll leave it up for a while, but definitely go over there and check it out. Now, we talked about opposition. So what was your opposition? What, what, was a po what was stopping you from being successful? It could be your friends. It could be your family. It could be some internal struggle. You didn't have the confidence. You were scared. You had fear. You didn't want to make a cold call. You didn't want to put yourself out there. Whatever it is, this is what we put in the opposition phase, right? So during the opposition phase, your life gets to a low point. We call it the rock bottom moment. And this is all under opposition. And this rock bottom moment is what creates the realization in your life that caused you to go into action. Now, everybody who's watching this, I guarantee you have some type of rock bottom moment. Your rock bottom moment doesn't have to be that you were strung out on drugs. If it is, that's just a powerful story. It doesn't have to be that you were homeless, but the point is you had a point where you were fed up completely with the lifestyle that you were currently living. Does everybody follow me so far? Drop a Y if you follow me. Drop a Y if you follow me. This is like brand storytelling at its best. If you're on Instagram, you want to interact with me, go to facebook.com slash Massive Action Movement. I'll try to go back there every once in a while and check in with y'all, but basically this is Brand storytelling at its best. We got a backstory, we got desires, we got an opposition. You hit rock bottom. Sorry about that. You hit rock bottom. Now that you hit rock bottom, let's go through our story again. Let's say you left corporate America, right? And I'm making, bear with me because I'm making this up off the top of my head. I was working in corporate America and I was fed up because I didn't feel the freedom. I felt like I was limited. I felt like they weren't letting me succeed, so I decided to do something about it. Yeah, I wanted to be successful, I wanted to have freedom, but deep down inside, I wanted to feel like I was living up to my full potential. I felt like I was worth it, so I'd always been told I was smart, so I wanted to feel like I was a person who was worthwhile in the world. 
Now, when I left the job, nobody supported me. Family, friends, everybody wrote me off. And I remember having my last paycheck because I had unemployment. And I thought to myself, now's the time to do something or I may have to go crawling back to corporate America and never realize my dreams. Rock bottom. I didn't have to talk about maybe being on drugs or anything like that, but I've hit rock bottom. So my story, if, you, if you're listening to this, you can start seeing how the story's starting to form. I'm making this shit up off the top of my head. Now, when I did my own brand story, of course I used events from my life. But what I'm saying is I'm making this up by using a structure. A structure, bam, that we use here. A structure that we use here in the How to Start a Business in 30 Days workbook. But basically, once you hit the rock bottom moment, what is the rock bottom moment causing your life? Anybody can guess in the chat? Anybody can guess what the rock bottom moment causes? Anybody? Let me check in with y'all. Okay. Can anybody guess? Just drop a question. What do you think the rock bottom moment is supposed to cause in your story? What do you think it is? I'm going to go into Instagram because I got a couple people on Instagram over there too, so I'm going to go check in what y'all think. Opportunity. Opportunity. Okay. The rock bottom moment leads to what we call realization. So, in a way, saying that it leads to opportunity is correct. I'm not going to lie to you. That is, in a way, correct. But what the realization does is basically creates the engine that caused you to go out and create what you wanted to create. Let's say I was doing organic juice. And I said, look, my mother, she got sick when she was young, because, well, not young. My mother got sick when she was older because she was eating all kinds of processed stuff and putting bad things into her body. And I realized that I wanted her to live a lot longer to be around her grandchildren. So I wanted to make sure that I was able to do something different by giving healthy alternatives to the world. Now, of course, I wanted to give healthy alternatives in the world, but to me, I was nothing without my mother. I love my mother so much, and for, her, for me to lose her prematurely would crush me. But I also wanted to feel like after everything she had given to me, I was able to give something back to her. External, internal desire. Now, when I went out there and started trying to create stuff, I ran into a bunch of opposition because a lot of companies were out there. There was a lot of competition. A lot of people weren't listening to the ideas I had about healthy alternatives, such as juice, and things of that nature. Now, I remember going into the hospital and my mother was sick and they didn't give her too much longer to live. And they were putting on all these different medicines, so I decided to do some research to find an alternative. I knew if I didn't do anything quick, my kids would risk up grow growing up without their grandmother. Hit the rock bottom moment. So I had a realization. And I made a vow to myself at that moment that I would dig deep to find anything that I could in order to create a healthy alternative and get my mother out of this situation. Now, I want everybody to know I am making this up. So if you just got here and you're like, damn, did that really happen to you? I'm just showing you how you can create stories. I've literally done a couple examples. We might even at the end take an example from somebody and try to create a story right here on air. But what I'm trying to get you to show, to show you that it's just a structure. And if you understand the structure, you're gonna tell a more compelling brand story. So let's say, somebody just signs up for your email list and you send them this story, they're going to be like, damn, I feel like I know them. And if you've ever watched any of our other stuff, we talk about the most important thing to get a person to purchase from you is that they know, like, and trust you. Does everybody follow me so far? Drop a Y if you follow me so far. Drop a Y if you follow me so far. And for everybody, um, this is also on Facebook. We got a great camera over there on Facebook, but you'll be able to go to the Massive Action Movement page and rewatch this later. I'll leave that up over there because I want everybody to get this information. But does everybody follow me? Drop a Y. Okay, perfect. Perfect. All right. So you've had this realization. You've had this realization. So the next part comes is the plan. Now, everybody has this in their life. I'm going to go through my story, and then I'll select somebody, and we'll try to build a story. You just, you're gonna, at the end, we're going to throw something random, and I'm going to try to go through the structure and create a story. But basically, after you have this realization, you have a plan. So basically, think of it like this. You get hit, rock bottom, you had this realization that shit needs to change, and now you formulate a plan. For me, my business was my plan. I was going to go read books and learn everything I could about business in order to create this, this whole ecosystem 
that I could help other people become successful. That was my plan. This really happened in my life. But if we're structuring our fictional story, we could add different stuff, right? So the plan is basically, what did you decide to do? If you've got a business, or even if you're just starting off, you don't need to have your business far down the, down the pipeline in order to do this. But what I am showing you is that this is the basic structure. We use this in all the stories we tell. Like I said in the beginning of this, you can go watch Who is Country Cowboy. You can watch, um, that's on YouTube. You can watch The Confessions of a Nightlife Architect. That's my boy, the world's most hated promoter. We did documentaries using this same story, and you're going to go through those stories and watch those and say, damn, this is the structure. I'm literally giving this shit away because I want people to tell more compelling brand stories. So that's the basis. So you have a plan. What did you decide to do? So let's use this example again of the one we just talked about, the juice person. We've got a plan. So I decided to travel, or I decided to research the top health, what's the word I'm looking for? Health resources across the world. I'm just writing this down so I can remember it. So I decided to research all the best health resources across the world and discover what is really causing all these health issues in people's lives. That's my plan. Does everybody follow that? So basically, I have a backstory. This is what happened to me. This is the opposition. I hit rock bottom. I had a realization shit needed to change. And then I formulated a plan. This is basic structure. If we go back to what we talked about in this one, we were talking about the basics of telling a simple micro story. Remember, beginning, middle, end, set up, event, payoff. We're doing the same thing. We're just expanding it out. This can get really complex. When we work with people personally, we can get really complex with this shit. We can go through 22 steps to break down all of this stuff into a story, but I'm giving you something that you could take right now. You can literally write this shit down and you can take it with you and you can start building something right now. You can start telling stories. I don't give a damn if it's at a party, if it's your business, if you get on Instagram, YouTube, you can start telling better stories because a lot of people, when they tell stories, they're just so flat because they have no structure, but I'm trying to get you to understand structure. Does that make sense? Everybody follow me so far? Everybody follow me so far? Drop a Y if you follow me. Okay. So now that we've got a plan, conflict. What conflict did you face? So we're using our health example. Maybe the FCC came after you and said that the stuff you were talking about is fraudulent. In my case, my conflict was the fact that I didn't have any support, friends, and family. And I actually went even further. My bank account was overdrawn negative $107. If you go watch, I have a presentation that I put out. If you go watch that, I literally talk about how my car got denied at a restaurant on somebody I was dating at the time's birthday. That was one of the most embarrassing things ever. So I talk about that because that was a conflict I faced, the poverty. Hitting a brick wall of not having any mentorship, any support. That was the conflict I faced. But the conflict could be external. It could be somebody fucked you over. You lost a job. You, 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 you had people coming at you, legal teams coming at you, whatever it is. This is why I said the variance of it is so vast because it could be anybody. It could be any one of those things. So taking that examples, what conflict did you face? And we go into the next part. So once we get through the conflict, we're going to go to after you had the conflict, after you had the problem, the conflict, once you had your plan and you initiate your plan, you had a conflict, the next part of the process is the resolution slash achievement. Okay, so basically, let's look at it like this. Resolution slash achievement is how did you overcome this problem? For me, for me. I'm going to tell you exactly how I overcame my problem, my personal problem. I actually put myself out of the house when I wasn't ready for it. And I decided that this was either going to be sink or swim for me. Either I was going to get it done or I was going to be fucking homeless. And that's what I did. I left my house. I didn't have money for rent. I even had to beat my friends in poker the first couple months out of the house in order to pay for groceries. That's how broke I was. But after that, grinding it out, going hard, all month long, I landed my first big client, which allowed me to be able to pay rent, 
which allowed me to be able to start building my life. And from there, I start building client after client after client after client. Now, this is important. This is important when you're telling your brand story. You may not feel like you're here yet, but you're just going to target a different part of your life. That's the thing that people miss. Anybody I've worked with, if they're trying to be an entrepreneur, I can find this story. If you're a millionaire or if you're somebody who's just starting off, I can find this story. And you can find this story. That's why we get on lives and we do stuff like this. This is why I'm doing this live training. Okay. So, resolution and achievement. Now, remember earlier I said that there's got to be internal and external desires? So, on the resolution, what I would write in the story is basically that I was able to move out my mom's house. I was able to build a business, create my first six-figure product, and then eventually move to a two-story building downtown. Two-story apartment downtown, right? That would be external. Yay, right? But remember in the beginning of my story, I told you that I felt worthless. I felt like I, I, I felt like I wasn't worthwhile. I felt like even though I was smart, I was a failure. That wasn't even a contribution to society. Well, by doing that, all these people start coming to me. I start helping all these people's lives. And I start feeling like I was worthwhile because I could take care of myself. And I was helping people achieve their goals. I felt worthwhile. So the final part of this is what was the self-revelation. In this self-revelation, if I had to count anything amongst all of this we talked about, if you leave this part out, it will make your story fall flat. Does everybody follow me? Everybody follow me so far. Drop a Y if this makes sense. This is what makes people connect to you. If you've ever felt like you wasn't shit, and then I told you all this I went through, which then made me feel like I was worthwhile, that would cause a connection. If you've never felt that way, that's fine, because the whole point of a brand story is that we're trying to connect with people who are like us, and when they're like us, they want to buy from us because they know, like, and trust us. Now, my story is an entrepreneurial story. So typically, the people I'm talking to are entrepreneurs. When these people come to me for marketing services, websites, and all these things, I listen to a lot of their stories, and a lot of their stories are similar to the process because they are people who want to go outside the traditional ways of thinking. They're people who had to maybe go against what their family thought. And by adding all these elements into my story and you listening to my story, you connect with me and say, damn, that person is like me. And we all know if somebody is like you, you're more likely to buy from them. Does everybody follow this so far? Does this make sense? Drop a Y if this makes sense, this whole structure. And what we'll do, what we'll do is we'll actually, we'll actually take somebody to give me, um, a backstory. Let's just do a backstory. And I'm going to just try to make some shit up off the top of my head using this structure. Just somebody like they're coming from some environment or something like that. Drop it in the chat. I'll give it a couple seconds. I'll look over here too on Facebook. I'll drop it a couple seconds and just give me a little story. And we're going to try to use this structure. We'll try to use this structure to come up with a brand story. So drop something. Drop something. And we're going to tell this story right now. We're going to go through this right now. We're going to make a story right now off the top of our head because I believe that'll be tremendous value for you to see me go through this process and see how simple it is to construct a story off the top of your head by using a structure. You remember when I told you on a micro level, we can use beginning, middle, and end, setup, event, payoff, and I told you these simple stories? Well, the same thing here. We're about to tell a story using this structure and make it compelling. Okay, what do we have? What do we have? Anybody, drop any, any scenario. Corporate America, um, abandoned by family, whatever it is, drop a scenario. We're going to come up with a backstory. Come up with a backstory. We're going to create a character. And we're going to tell a story right here. And then we'll wrap it up and do some Q&A. And then um, we'll take it out from there. So go ahead and drop a story in there. And we're going to talk about it. Let me get a little water before I get into this. Oh, OK, I'm ready. We got anything yet? Let me tie this. I don't want to trip. Okay. Okay. Here we go. <sighs> All right. 
So what we're going to pull out here is we're going to use a brand. I'm going to use a story. Now, I'm going to use something that's near and dear to my heart because it's a filmmaker, right? So how will we do this, right? Let's try to go through this really quickly. Now, bear with me. This is off the top of my head, so I'm just going to try to put it out there. You bear with me, and hopefully you'll get the point of how this works. So let's start with the backstory. So I hear... I'll tell it like as if it's me, but this is just a story I'm making up off the top of my head. Just disclaimer. <clears throat> so I was always somebody who was interested in telling amazing stories. And you know those type of stories that when you hear those stories, that they inspire you. They make you feel like you can accomplish anything in the world. I always wanted to be somebody who told those type of stories. Now, the biggest thing for me was I wanted to create an impact in this world. Because I felt like the images and the stories that I told could make other people feel like they were worthwhile. But internally, I was broke. I wasn't making any money. And I felt like, how could somebody inspire the world if they weren't able to do, be an inspiration in their own life? So I want to accomplish something for myself. And through my stories, show people how they could accomplish something for themselves. Watch the structure. Now, when I first left, and I started in filmmaking, um, all my movies were terrible. In fact, everybody who watched them said I would never be successful. Anytime I submitted something to people, they rejected it. All my scripts got rejected. Nobody wanted to work with me. And I felt like, honestly, that maybe this wasn't for me. Maybe it was just a delusion. Maybe it was a dream that I could never accomplish. But then something happened. I had a realization. And I realized that although I had been able to watch movies, I had been able to watch stories, I had seen compelling content. I had never delved deep into what made this content compelling. So I decided to study. I purchased every book I could on filmmaking, editing, sound design. I also watched the top 100 movies and tried to compare and see what made those stories great and compelling. It was time for me to release my next film. But because I had built such a bad reputation and people didn't believe in me, it was going to be difficult for me to get it done. But that's when I got my big break. See, there was one art house that never heard of me. There was a, there was a film festival coming up. And in this film festival, I was going to enter my story. Now, nobody had heard from me. But what I was going to do was enter it under a pseudo name so nobody would know it was me. I remember as the, as the curtains drew and everybody watched the movie, I stood there completely terrified that people were going to hate it. At the end of the movie, room falls silent. And then, like the movies, I hear that slow clap. And everybody gets up and has a standing ovation. And I walk to the front of the room, and everybody's shocked to see it was me. Because remember, all these people had rejected my scripts. They rejected my story. But they said that this was one of the greatest movies that they had seen. And right there on the spot, I was given the deal to make my next movie. Now, this was an amazing accomplishment. I was going to finally be able to inspire people across the world. But I had accomplished something. I had created a motivation so I could show other people how they could be successful. That is the structure off the top of my head. Does everybody follow that? Hopefully nobody dropped out, but does everybody follow that? Did everybody follow that story? That was basically a story that I just made up off the top of my head. Hopefully, I think the live might have dropped out for a little bit. Hopefully y'all didn't miss that story. Hopefully y'all didn't miss the story. But basically, that's a story that was basically created off the top of my head using this structure, using this structure that can be found in how to start a business in 30 days. Now, one thing that's great about this, last week we talked about how to create a one-page business plan. We talked about how to create a world-class business by using four steps. This week we talked about how to create a compelling brand story. If you want to learn more topics about business, drop in the chat what you'd like to learn about. But if you want to go in depth right now, you can literally go to howtostartabusiness30days.com and you can check out howtostartabusiness30days.com. It's literally what it's called. This basically takes you through four weeks of everything you need to do to structure a business. And even this, this whole process is in how to start a business in 30 days. And I literally have step-by-step -step videos that walk you through how to create a process like this. Not only that, how to market it, 
how to start a business in 30 days is the easiest way to build a profitable, freedom-based business without leaving the comfort of your own home. You're literally gonna learn all this stuff by sitting at home. And what we recently did was added Making Money One-on-One, -on -one, which shows you how to make money no matter what level you're at. If you're just starting off, all the way to if you already have a business that's running, it teaches you how to do it. Amazing program, it's gonna take you through this. It's gonna take you through these weeks and stuff like that. It's gonna show you everything that you need to be successful. If you wanna start a business, you wanna tell a compelling brand story, it's all in there, every aspect of business. We have 50 videos, 50 videos. And it's, it's so inexpensive right now, it's crazy. I'm doing this because I want as many people as possible to get a hold of this. Now, I wanna tell y'all something. I've created a, a goal for myself, which is to help create one million seven figure businesses. And I want you to be one of them. So if you're watching this right now, my goal is to help you become one of the one million seven figure businesses. That's why I talk about this stuff. That's why I do live streams. We're gonna be doing this every Monday. I'm gonna be doing a topic, we're gonna to live stream about it, and then we're going to do some Q&A about it. But check out how to start a business in 30 days. Otherwise, um, I'm glad I was able to give you some free value. If we have any questions, I'm gonna turn it over to the chats. Um, ask me those questions, I'll answer a couple questions, and then we'll end the chat. So if you've got any questions, just drop them now. I'm gonna wait for them to come in. So if you have any questions, just drop them in the chat. I'll answer some before we end the live. Thank y'all for joining me today. This was a good one. I had fun doing this one today because this is like one of the bread and butter tactics that we use to tell amazing brand stories. And when I work with these big businesses, this is the stuff that I come in and tell them, hey, this is how you create a brand story. If you can do this at the highest level, I promise you, the game is, is different. You're just different. Wait a couple more seconds. See if any questions start rolling in. Anything, anything about storytelling, anything that you didn't understand, just ask some questions and then we'll wrap it up. What's up everybody jumping in right now? We just wrapping up here. We just wrapping up how to tell a brand story. So what I'll do then if we don't have any questions, I'm just gonna recap everything we talked about and then we'll wrap it up. So how to tell a brand story. We talked about the big picture. We have to, we have to master micro storytelling and macro storytelling. Micro just simply being how to tell a simple story. Let's say you get on your story. Let's say you get on your Snapchat. Let's say, not Snapchat, is people still, maybe people still on Snapchat. Um, you get on your TikTok, whatever it is, you get on YouTube, how to tell a story, like on a micro level, very small story. If you're at a party somewhere, if you're at an event and somebody asks you, hey, you know, who are you? Or what's something interesting that happened to you? You know how to tell a micro story. And we gave you a structure for that. Macro storytelling. We talked about telling a overall story that has a message surrounding it. So that's macro storytelling and what we've affectionately called narrative marketing. Narrative marketing breaks down to, from your vision statement, we talked about this last week. You can go check out my live stream from last week. But basically, my vision, one of the things you know is create a future where you're in control. And there's these certain ideas that I always embed into my stories that come from this idea. Moving out of traditional education, not having things like an MBA, not wasting money on things like that, not having a regular job. Now, this is my story for the type of brand I'm building, and this stuff connects with the type of people that connect with me. But you'll see me talk about stuff. I might do posts about traditional education and stuff like that. But the whole point is, it's all under a narrative, a kind of story that I'm telling that my people that follow me will get in line with. Micro storytelling. We talked about each story is basically just broken down to beginning, middle, end. We talked about that structure of setup, event, payoff. So you set up the story, you have an event, and then you have a payoff for that event. That's the basic of storytelling. And we went through a little small story to talk about that. Then we went through the macro level, how to tell your brand story at a very high level. And this is the stuff that when people come to your videos and stuff like that, they're like, damn, I feel like I connect with that person. So with that being said, we went through this whole story of backstory, who the character is, the desires, both internal and external. And we talked about that. The opposition, what stopped you from just being the person you wanted to be? 
When did you hit rock bottom? What was your rock bottom moment that gave you a realization that you had to change shit? Then from there, the plan. What was your plan? What did you decide to do because you knew something had to change? The conflict. What happened when you initiate this plan that tried to stop you? Finally, what was the resolution after the plan was launched and you overcame the conflict? And finally, what self-revelation did you have? What internal revelation did you have that allowed you to be like, yeah, I've become a better person as a result of this journey, which completes the entire arc? This is the power of storytelling. If you just joined us, I hope you'll go back and watch the live. If you want to watch it um, on Facebook, go to facebook.com slash the massive action movement. You can see it, um, the audio quality, all that type of stuff is, will be better. And that's why I'm focusing most of my eyes, too, if you wonder what I'm looking at if you're on Instagram. But go check that out because I'm going to leave this up for a while. And I may even repost it because I'm recording it, too. But basically, this is the bread and butter. This is the, the, the dark secrets. This is the stuff that nobody's telling you about when it talks to telling the brand story. Yeah, it's fine to have nice colors and stuff like that. And it's, it's cool to talk about, hey, what are, what are your emotions and feelings and stuff like that? But how do you actually structure it into some shit that's tangible that you can use? And that's what we do on How to Start a Business in 30 Days. And that's what, I'm import that's what I'm focused on when it comes to being successful. With that being said, you can find me anywhere, Princeton Hicks. Um, like I said, I'm going to leave this up for a while. If you want any more questions or you want to learn about like one-on-one -on -one coaching or anything with me, you can just DM me. Um, I'm going to be actually opening up a new coaching group pretty soon where I'm one-on-one -on -one coaching a bunch of different entrepreneurs and stuff like that. And you can be a part of that. But basically, you get to be one-on-one -on -one with me. Like, you want to do your brand story? I will literally sit down, walk through your life, and go through your brand story and teach you how to create one so it's compelling. And then, like I say, all this other stuff we talk about, going through all these weeks of business, how to start a business in 30 days. This is the easiest way to do it, and you don't even have to go anywhere. You can watch it, 50-plus videos, watch it at your speed, and have a blast with that. Besides that, I want to thank everybody for checking me out today. I want to thank everybody for being a part of the stream today. I want to thank everybody who came out, all my friends who supported, all the people who dropped and supported, and then also participated in the chat. We're going to be doing every Monday at 7 p.m. CST, Central Standard Time, because I'm in Houston. We're going to be doing these live streams. Drop a topic, DM me a topic, anything you want to hear or learn about business, and I'm going to put together a presentation specifically for you. We're going to get it done this year. That's, that's, my, that's my word. 2021, if you don't know the shit you need to know about business, we're going to get it done this year. And if you want to get it done with me, drop those questions. Don't be shy. We're going to get it done. All right. Keep taking action, y'all. Massive action movement. And I'm out.